everyone and welcome to today's talk on the psychology of financial decision making by leveraging ai for better investment which will be led by by the well known page sapanar welcome page thank you thanks so much for having me page if you can give a quick introduction of yours Yeah, absolutely. So, uh my primary interest lies at the intersection of psychology and technology. And so, uh it's one thing to have to understand things from a technological perspective, but it's another thing to extrapolate that technology uh and embed it into society. And so, my specialization and focus is on neural economics, behavioral psychology and understanding um user experience. great uh so as you have explained the intersect so in this complicated world of finance i think there is a deep connection between like how people think and how they choose to spend so today we start a trip into the worlds of behavioral economics and cutting edge artificial intelligence to try out to figure out why we make financial decisions we do so without further ado i'll hand over to page who will share her expertise and insights on this in- exciting topic page all uh, over to you thank you thanks so much okay so i'll go ahead and share my screen and pull up the presentation Okay, perfect. Yes. Okay, so thank you for joining me today in this webinar while we discuss the psychology of financial decision making and leveraging AI technology for better investments. So really the focus is on the intersection between psychology and technology specifically during this webinar uh, AI. And so we're going to be discussing and diving into several different uh interesting topics. I really wanted to focus on the lesser known psychological principles for this presentation, uh maybe the ones that aren't so obvious to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh so we'll get into the power of cognitive bias, we'll contrast and compare AI intuition versus human intuition. Uh, we're going to explore the role of emotions in financial bubbles and what that is. Uh, we'll talk about some neural economics, uh, nudging behavior, wisdom of the crowd approach, and then we'll end up with some real life case studies. Uh, throughout the whole presentation, I'll also be bringing up specific examples from the ac- academic literature to support um, my examples. And so I want to start off the presentation by exploring several different cognitive biases. So contrary to what a lot of people say about human behavior, I've been studying it for the past 10 years. Um uh, my professional experience started in clinical psychology, so my role was really psychological profiling and assessing human behavior. And contrary to what a lot of people think about human behavior, it's actually quite predictable. um and so several cognitive biases are the ones listed on this screen i'm going to go through each one of them so confirmation bias refers to the propensity to seek out information that's in favor of your pre-existing beliefs and opinions and then on top of that you discard any evidence that goes against what you believe and so you're ignoring discounting uh or conflicting evidence. So in finance, for example, people might only consider information that supports their investment decisions, leading them to overlook potential risks or alternatives or maybe more prudent choices. Uh this can happen in everyday life as well. A lot of stereotypes are formed from this type of bias. Um and it's ultimately all these biases are rooted in the brain's desire to want to be as efficient as possible. Uh the next one is overconfidence bias. So people tend to overestimate their abilities and knowledge believing that they can outperform the market or make successful investment decisions. So this 
uh, can in turn lead to excessive risk taking and suboptimal investment strategies that result in, in losses. Uh, so anchoring bias occurs when people rely heavily on the first piece of information that they encounter when they make a decision. So even if it's irrelevant or arbitrary, they're sticking to that first piece of information. And this has to do with how the human brain processes information and in memory consolidation. So uh, for example, in financial decision making, people might anchor their investment choices to past prices or historical performance, discarding current market conditions. Uh, so loss aversion is the uh, tendency to feel the pain of the losses more intensely than the pleasure of equivalent in magnitude gains. And so as a result, individuals may, for example, avoid selling, losing investments, hoping that they will recover, which can lead to holding on to declining assets for too long and missing out on better opportunities. Uh, the next one is hurting behavior. So far too often, and I think we can appreciate this bias now more than ever, uh, people follow the actions of the crowd or the herd rather than making decisions independently or engaging in their own critical thinking. So this in finance can lead to asset bubbles and market overreactions, as well as a lack of diversity in their investment portfolio. Number six is recency bias. So this is opposite to anchoring bias in that it involves giving more weight to recent events of information and then you discard older data uh, as irrelevant when you make decisions. So in, in finance in particular, individuals might be overly influenced by recent market trends or news leading to more impulsive reactions that don't align with long-term financial goals. Um, the endowment effect so this one is a little less well known. It refers to the tendency to overvalue something just because we own it. Uh, this is an, a bias that's particularly pertinent in individuals who score higher on the narcissistic scale. And so in, when it comes to financial decision making, individuals may hold on to investments that have increased in value beyond their fundamental worth just simply because they own it, which can lead to missed opportunities um, for better allocations of their assets. Uh, number eight is sunk cost fallacy. So this is the inclination to continue investing in something based on the resources committed even if the future prospects are poor. So in finance, individuals can refuse to sell on a losing investment and just count their losses just because they already put a lot of money into it. So they're holding on to that investment, even if it's better just to count it as a loss and move on or reallocate somewhere else. And then the availability heuristic. So this is a mental pattern that uh, refers to when people make decisions just based on, oh, oh, sorry, I have my screen by mistake. Um, when people make decisions just based on information that's readily available without considering all the data or information that's available. So uh, in finance, this can lead to overlooking less memorable risks or opportunities that may have actually a significant impact on the overall portfolio. Uh, so the next slide. So now I want to talk about the ability to adapt to these individual biases that we explored. And it can do this in, in three primary ways. 
data-driven personalization. So this is when AI collects and processes vast amounts of data, including historical trading patterns, risk tolerance assessments, behavioral tendencies uh, to build individualized profiles. Number two, is identifying behavioral biases. So AI can actually analyze your past decisions and behaviors and identify the specific uh, biases that we talked about in the last slide that you as an investor are most prone to and um, compensate for that. The third one is that AI is continuously learning. And so it learns from new data, feedback, ensuring that its personalized recommendations are up to date and reflective of investors changing preferences. And um, we saw there's two studies that looked at this. So one study in 2019 focused on using AI to deliver personalized coaching and recommendations to investors to help them overcome specific behavioral challenges or um, the biases that they were most prone to in their financial decision making. And then um, in 2021, another study uh, replicated this and used what they called advisor machine learning with discriminative client feedback. So it explored the use of AI to provide personalized feedback to individual investors based on their behavioral biases to aid in a more rational decision-making process versus um, subjective like us humans tend to do. So I want to explore next some lesser known success stories of AI driven personalized behavioral coaching. So there are several um, stories where personalized AI behavioral coaching has led to increased uh, ROI and investment performance. Uh, so the first one is that it helps overcome loss aversion. So AI coaches can successfully guide investors with high loss aversion tendencies to make more calculated risks and avoid making those impulsive decisions that may be um, driven by a fear of loss. Uh, it can help mitigate against hurting behavior. So AI has been used to discourage investors from just blindly following market trends and engaging in um, this hurting behavior to promote more independent, well-informed investment decision-making. Uh, it can also help deal with overconfidence. So AI detects overconfident behavior and may offer cautionary advice to prevent excessive risk-taking uh, to help mitigate potential financial losses. Uh, and then the last one, optimizing investment time horizons. So by analyzing investors' long-term financial goals, AI can help align their investment time horizon to help mitigate, mitigate against more short-term uh, impulsive decisions that can jeopardize what you ultimately want to see in your investment portfolio long term. Uh, in the coming two slides, I want to talk about AI intuition versus human intuition. So AI intuition, or sorry, human intuition refers to a person's ability to make decisions, to make judgments, and arrive at conclusions without relying on conscious reasoning or explicit information processing. So this is the mode our brain is in most of the time. Uh, it's often described as a gut feeling, a hunch, or an instinct, but it's largely shaped by your experiences, your knowledge, uh, even trauma, stress, cognitive biases, and anything to do with emotion. So it allows humans to quickly assess situations and make decisions based on patterns, mental heuristics, and subconscious information processing. Uh, if there's anything you're to take from this presentation, it's to learn that the brain doesn't care about the outcome as much as it cares about being efficient. 
And so that to be aware of the types of mental shortcuts that your brain takes or has the propensity to engage in more often will be really, really helpful, not just in your financial decision making, but just decision making in general life in business relations, etc. cetera. Uh, so by contrast, AI intuition is a term that's used to describe the capabilities of AI, uh, particularly machine learning algor algorithms that detect patterns in decisions based on data uh, analysis that are beyond human comprehension. So unlike human intuition, which is influenced by emotions, cognitive biases, trauma, um, historical events, AI intuition is solely data-driven and includes st statistical analysis. So machine learning algorithms can process vast amounts of data, identify complex relationships, recognize patterns that elude human perception, and allow these algorithms to thus make predictions, classify data, perform tasks in fields like natural language processing, computer vision, financial modeling, without the need for explicit programming or rule-based instructions. So it's important to note though that AI isn't truly intuitive the way that we humans experience intuition. Rather, it's just a result of sophisticated mathematical models and pattern recognition capabilities that are far beyond what we humans can do. Um, so, and, and AI, according to studies, have shown remark, remarkable capabilities in making financial decisions based on patterns that elude our human intuition. So, for example, in high frequency trading, AI algorithms can quickly analyze market data and execute trades based on patterns uh, that might not be uh, immediately obvious to human traders. Um, a study also concluded that the human brain employs a risk sensitive reinforcement learning process to make decisions but AI models, on the other hand, might learn risk-sensitive behaviors in a more data-driven, uh, objective manner. So I wanted to do this next slide to contrast and compare uh, AI intuition versus human intuition on several, on five different domains. So in terms of pattern recognition, AI excels at recognizing complex patterns, correlations in large data sets that are beyond human capabilities um, versus humans rely heavily on intuition that can be uh, subjective to cognitive bias, emotion, uh, stress, et cetera. Uh, interpretation or interpretability so AI, it's funny, humans like to just call anything that they don't understand black, like black holes or black boxes. So there's this term used in AI uh, where they're referred to as black boxes because their decision-making process is more hard to interpret and understand. Whereas AIs are far more predictable, transparent. Um, they often engage in a correlational form of reasoning. Processing speed. Um, this one's a little bit more obvious. AI can hold a lot more information. Uh, humans can only hold up to five to seven items in their working memory. AI can process vast amounts of data all at the same time in different directions or dimensions, if you want to think about it that way. Uh, adaptability. Uh, AI can adapt to new information and update its decision making quickly. Humans, uh, we, we don't adapt as quickly. Uh, we may be influenced by emotions, core beliefs, uh, and cognitive bias that can hinder our adaptability. Uh, often our reality is shaped by what we pay attention to. So if we believe in something and we want to see it that way, we'll see it that way. 
And then the last one is emotional factors. Um, I, I went to a few conferences and I hear people talking about, oh, when, you know, how can we get AI to integrate emotion? Um, it's actually, <laughs> I think that AI is at an advantage in that it doesn't incorporate emotion because emotion is what leads to biases and more subjective behavior. Um, I mean, emotion serves its purpose in other areas, but in terms of decision making, it really hinders um, that part of our, our logical reasoning. And AI just lacks emotions, therefore it lacks biases and makes more data-driven objective decisions, which can be really helpful in certain areas of your life, particularly in financial decision making. Uh, and, and this can be demonstrated by the concept of financial bubbles. So financial bubbles are periods of rapid unsustainable price increase in assets uh, due to just irrational buying and just pure exuberance amongst investors. So particularly euphoria, FOMO, greed, these all play a significant role in market trends and it sometimes can expand so vastly and so quickly that, to, that it um, creates what we call a financial bubble. So we saw this in the 17th century with tulip mania. This is when tulip bulbs were selling at the price of a luxurious home at that time. And so it can have a, a significant effect in that regard. Um, and AI can actually help detect these trends. So it can detect potential uh, financial bubbles uh, so AI and natural language processing algorithms can analyze social media data, for example, to, in, to gauge investor sentiment and emotions related to specific assets or markets. So it does this by monitoring social media discourse. Uh, it can detect a sudden surge in uh, a particular language. So if everyone's being optimistic about something, it will detect that. Uh, by nature, data should follow a natural distribution curve. If that curve is weighted to one side, meaning majority of the population is saying one thing, then this can be a risk factor for a potential financial bubble. Um, and AI can also detect, you know, FOMO, uh, buying frenzy and indicators of just an overheated market, essentially. Um, and that's, that's its role in that. Uh, AI's wisdom of the crowd approach. So basically what this means is that more heads are better than one, put really simply. So it's a concept that suggests a diverse group of individuals. So heterogeneous versus homogeneous. Um, can engage in better decision making versus just one solo person alone or a homogeneous group of people. And so um, this type of collective decision making outperforms in certain situations uh, and AI can engage in this, I guess you can call it wisdom of the crowd approach to make better informed decisions. Um, it does this by the following uh, ways that I listed on the screen here. So aggregating information from diverse sources, it can gain comprehensive views of market sentiments, trends, relevant events um, that mimic the, the collective knowledge of a more diverse crowd. Um, this interestingly, a side note, also applies well to businesses. Businesses with heterogeneity of talent, a more diverse team outperform um, homogenous teams. So by AI harnessing collective intelligence for investment insights, it can outperform just any one expert on their own. Um, some real world examples of successful predictions. So for example, in stock market predictions, AI has shown to the ability to forecast stock price movements by considering a wide range of factors, including market sentiment, historical price data, 
and company financials. So unlike the human brain, it won't be biased towards the first or last piece of information. It will take everything. And then uh, robo-advisors in investment platforms. Studies have indicated um, outperform human advisors as well. So robo-advisors are these AI-driven platforms that can offer investment advice or portfolio management based on your individual um, financial goals, and then you can set their risk tolerance. And uh, this has shown to be successful as well. Uh, so neural economics. So this, this is a field that combines principles from neuroscience, economics, and psychology to understand how the brain processes information and how that influences financial decision making. And uh, so research ha has shed a lot of light on some fascinating brain patterns that are associated with gains and losses. So uh, the first one, reward processing. So when individuals experience gains or positive financial outcomes, specific brain regions such as the VTA or the ventral striatum will actually become more active and they'll light up. Uh, and this increased activity suggests that the brain's reward system is uh, at play and indicating that pleasure and, and satisfaction is occurring from those financial gains. Um, Loss aversion, so studies in neural economics also shown that the brain responds more strongly to losses than to gains. Uh, the amygdala, which is a part of the brain that's involved in processing emotions and negative stimuli, fear, um, is known to be particularly active uh, in people who have this bias. And the third thing, there are individual differences uh, and neuroeconomic research has supported that some, the, the degree to which a portion of the brain is activated to a certain event is, is different amongst people. So what AI can do is it can actually analyze the neuroimaging results and take that into account to better personalize your portfolio uh, when you make financial decisions. This particular feature, to my knowledge, I mean, I could be wrong. I don't, I'm not up to date on everything. It's evolving so fast. But to my knowledge, this feature has only been proved in, in research labs and institutes and not yet had real world utility. Um, and neuroeconomic profiling. So that's what it's called when I mentioned before, when the brain can integrate neural imaging results to create an individualized portfolio for you and then suggest recommendations based on its finding. This can lead to increased um, risk mitigation and behavioral just financial insights as well. Uh, so nudging behavior, so nudging is a term that in, in psychology, we also call it framing, but it's a term that was first found in behavioral economics that means sudden changes in the presentation of information can influence people's decisions. So, uh, and this occurs just in human and business interaction as well, what you're wearing, what you preference a, so, a certain conversation with can also influence the way people respond to you. First impressions are very much based off of this as well, this nudging or framing behavior, uh, but specifically applied to finance. What it means is that AI can use nudging behavior to better uh, to increase your performance in your financial portfolio. So for example, it can make personalized recommendations um, tailored to each investor's unique situation by offering relevant and timely suggestions. Uh, it can optimize timing. So for example, presenting the potential benefits of a long-term investment or retirement plan, for example, in a positive light can motivate people early on to take action 
um, and to start uh, taking action and thinking about the long term now. And then um, AI can also leverage behavioral insights to understand how investors make decisions, what factors influence their choices, um, understand which cognitive bias or mental heuristic that person is making the most frequently, and then it can nudge to overcome that bias so you're making more rational objective decisions. Uh, and then lastly, uh, we've seen this in several studies. So the first one, this research by Thaler and his colleagues in 2013, they uh, explored AI-driven interventions such as default contribution rates and in, uh, personalized investment advice and found that it was more successful in increasing retirement savings amongst their employees. So it worked in that context. Um, another study looked at the impact of setting timely reminders um, so you'd get notifications and reminders about your increased saving rates, and this would incentivize them to uh, take action that are in alignment with whatever they set as their long-term goal. And then the last one's pretty cool. Uh, it's something that we're going to be working on at the connector as well, which is having an AI-based robo-advisor. And so... Um, there's some applications, well, the applications that this study looked at was in Betterment, Wealthfront, and Future Advisor, and um, these four robo-advisors outperformed the impact of human advisors, both on qualitative and quantitative um, domains, and so they found those to be effective. Um, I think that now with ChatGPT coming out, we'll, we'll reach a point where individuals, we can increase this even more and individuals can ask certain questions, uh, like type it, and then the AI robo-advisor will analyze your behavioral trends, your cognitive biases, um, all the data that it has on you to provide recommendations uh, that are objective and informed and you can kind of set your risk tolerance, how risky you want to be, uh, et cetera. And so those are, I think we can open the floor up to some questions. Um, yes, I have shared you on the chat with you. Okay. Um, let me just find out under the Q and A or the chat, the chat section. Yes. Okay. okay. How can, so number one, how can AI driven financial tools adapt to changing market conditions and unexpected events? So like I said, it can do, I, I mentioned this already in that. AI, it can do certain things like analyze social media trends, um, analyze certain market sentiments, but it, it's not a fortune teller. Nothing can tell the future. And so it, it can only make more objective, rational decisions. Uh, and, you know, it can detect certain things like FOMO and hurting behavior, but it's not going to tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future, it can just use certain uh, factors that are predictive of long-term trends or even historical data to make more well-informed choices. And so and I hope that answers that question. And how can AI help improve emotional control and mindfulness to help people make better financial decisions? This is an interesting question. Um, I, I would say it, it would have to be an AI that's separate than say a robo financial advisor because that AI is going to care more about the long-term goal that you asked it to do. When we get in the area of emotional control and emotional regulation, this 
this is a more complex manner because the reason for your emotional dysregulation can be stemming from a variety of reasons that AI won't know unless you tell it, right? So you, it can analyze your decision-making patterns, but at the end of the day, AI doesn't know your history unless you tell it. AI doesn't know your stress level unless you tell it. AI doesn't know anything that you don't tell it. And all of these things, physical factors, emotional factors, they all affect your ability to emotional re emotionally regulate as a human being. Genetics is also a thing. So when we look at the biopsychosocial model of, um, of emotional regulation, there's factors that fall under each of those categories that influence our ability to emotionally regulate. Um, what I would say is that there's a lot of AI um, kind of apps that are coming out that I've heard of and been approached on that um, will help teach mindfulness skills, maybe mindfulness um, meditation or grounding techniques. But AI doesn't know when you're becoming emotionally dysregulated. It can't sense you know, when you're getting angry or upset, unless that's what you're telling it you are. Perfect. So I uh, loved it. Whatever. Uh, and thank you, Paige, for sharing this valuable insight and expertise with us today. I'm sure like our audience has found your presentation informative and engaging. And remember, guys, as Paige has taught us about the importance of emotional resilience, and the promise of AI and data analysis and how intuition and technology can work together to help you. So as we wrap up for today's insightful journey, uh, remember in the dynamic world of finance, there is an understanding of intersection of human psychology and cutting edge of AI tools that can be your compass to wiser investments. So by acknowledging them, and the biases that often cloud our judgment and embracing AI as a valuable ally. So we empower ourselves to make more informed choices. So thank you for being a part of this engaging webinar and strike confidently towards a better financial future where our financial decisions are not just influenced by trends, but by a deep understanding of uh, ourselves and transformative capabilities of AI. So here is to a smarter investments and a prosperous future. And thank you so much, Paige, for this wonderful presentation we had today and the expertise you. You with us. And thank you again for joining us today, guys, and have a great day ahead. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great day, everyone.